All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about operations with matrices, um, most of which you'll find incredibly easy. Um, so to get started, um, two matrices are equal um, when their corresponding entries are equal. Uh, so if two matrices are equal, their corresponding entries must be the same, uh, which also implies that uh, they have to be the same size. Um, to add or subtract matrices, you're simply going to add or subtract the corresponding entries. Uh, which also, again, means they must be the same size if they're going to have corresponding entries. Um, for scalar multiplication, uh, scalar, a scalar is nothing more than a real number, so it's going to feel like you're just distributing that scalar throughout the matrix to each of the entries. Um, and then there's matrix multiplication, um, which is a little bit different. So a couple of the things to remember here when it comes to these operations um, is that for matrices to be equal, uh, they have to be the same size. In addition, obviously, to that, their entries must be the same. Uh, to add or subtract, they have to be the same size. For a scalar multiplication, any size will work. Uh, but for matrix multiplication, um, it's a little more complex. So let me just go ahead and start you off with um, an M by N matrix and an N by R matrix. So matrix multiplication, uh, if we have an M by N multiplied with an N by R, these two numbers being the same say yes, we can multiply. So for example, if I gave you two matrices that were different sizes and I told you to add them, you couldn't. You would say the operation is undefined. Well, matrix multiplication says that the number of columns of the first matrix must match the number of rows in the second matrix. If it does, then yes, you can multiply. Furthermore, it says that the size of the resulting matrix is an M by R. So the size of resulting matrix would be the number of rows in the first matrix by the number of columns in the second matrix. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and throw up a couple examples that you see there in the notes. The first example says if you have a 2 by 3 and a 3 by 2, can you multiply them? And if so, what's the size of the resulting matrix? Well, first of all, since the threes are the same, yes, we can multiply. And the size of the resulting matrix would be a 2 by 2. Now, in the second example, all that I've done is interchange the two matrices. So instead of having a 2 by 3 first and a 3 by 2 second, I'm going to have a 3 by 2 first and a 2 by 3 second. I just interchange the order. So can we multiply these? Yes. And the size of the resulting matrix is a 3 by 3. Now, there's a surprisingly big takeaway from this example. Um, we were able to interchange the order. And while we were still able to multiply, the size of the resulting matrix was different. This says that matrix multiplication is not commutative. Um, if we think about real numbers, and I gave you a 5 times a 3 uh, versus a 3 times a 5, both of these answers not only are able to be computed, but we get the same thing. Um, well, that's the idea of commutativity. Commutativity says two things. You're able to perform the operation, and you get the same thing. While we're able to perform the operation here, we don't get the same thing. So matrix multiplication um, is not commutative, okay? So I'll go ahead and put an example up on the screen and we'll run through one of these. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll multiply these two matrices, um, if possible, I should say, I guess. Um, the size of the first matrix is gonna be a three by two. The size of the second matrix is gonna be a two by three. So it actually looks like, yes, we can multiply them and we'll end up with a three by three matrix. Now, what I'd recommend here is go ahead and actually draw out your three by three matrix. And I'm gonna make this uh, exceptionally large uh, to emphasize my point and to keep track of everything. So there's our three by three resulting matrix. 
Now, the way I'll describe this next um, is, is, is very informally, but it seems to work well. Um, we have nine entries to fill in. Um, this first entry right here, notice how this is in row one, column one. Now, the easiest way to remember this is, is for matrix multiplication, the size of the matrix, uh, matrices are incredibly important. So in general, when we talk about size, it's always the rows by the columns. So I'm going to refer to this as the row matrix and this as the column matrix. So in our first entry, which is in row one, column one, I'm going to take the entries in row one and the entries in column one and put together what's called a linear combination. So I'm going to take the entries in row one of the row matrix and the entries for the column one and the column matrix. Uh, we're going to have 1 times 2 plus 1 times 3. That's the linear combinations. So now we're ready to move on to the next column. Uh, we can do column 2. So column 2, row 1. Column 2, row 1. Um, we'll take row 1 entries and column 2 entries and create the linear combination. So we'll have 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2. Move over to the next one. Uh, row 1, row 1, column 3. So row 1, column 3, plus row 1, column 3. So we've got row 1 complete. Now we'll go to row 2. The first entry will be row 2, column 1. So row 2 would be our negative 1, our column 1 would be 2, plus our 0 times the 3. Row 2, column 2, we'd have negative 1 times 1, plus 0 times 2. Row 2, column 3, would be negative 1 uh, times 0, plus 0 times 0. And finally, our row 3. So row 3, be this guy right here. Uh, and then in the first column, uh, that would give us a 1 times 2 plus negative 1 times 3. The second column would give us a 1 times 1 plus a negative 1 times 2. And finally, row 3, column 3, would be a 1 times 0 plus a negative one times zero. And so the last thing I would do then is I'd clean this up. Uh, looks like we get a five, a three, a zero, a negative two, a negative one, a zero, a negative one, a negative one, and a zero. So that's the resulting product of those two matrices being multiplied. Uh, and again, uh, it looks like it's a, a bit of a mess, um, but it's not too bad. Um, so I'd encourage you to try the next example, and uh, we'll be sure to talk about it in class uh, because I know this one's a little difficult to show um, on the screen. The last thing I'll say about uh, matrix operations uh, in these cases um, is that obviously not all um, operations for matrices uh, are possible. Uh, we don't say that there are no, there's no solution uh, if you can't add, subtract, multiply uh, matrices. Uh, instead, we say that if an operation is not possible, that it's undefined. Undefined is the correct use of uh, uh, the phrase. All right, so the last thing that I'll need to talk about is a matrix equation. Now, matrix equation um, looks kind of funny at first, but once we work through it, you'll see exactly where it all comes from. The first thing I should point out to you is that when we multiply the two, to the two matrices on the left, uh, we have a 2 by 2 here and a 2 by 1. So yes, you can multiply them, and the size of the resulting matrix will be a 2 by 1. So I'll go ahead and sketch the 2 by 1 in here. So we have two rows, one column. Uh, and in putting together the linear combination, we would have 1 times x plus 5 times y, followed by negative 2 times x plus 4 times y. Now that's still set equal 
to the matrix 210. And now two matrices are equal if their corresponding entries are equal. So we now can see that x plus 5y equals 2 and negative 2x plus 4y equals 10. So if we start in this form, we can easily now go back into a matrix form whenever we need to. Uh, generally speaking, we say that a matrix equation has the form ax equals b, where matrix A is the coefficient matrix. Notice where the 1, the 5, the negative 2, and the 4 come from. They're the coefficients. Uh, the x would be the variable matrix. And then the 2 and the 10, the B would be the constant matrix. So AX equals B, and you can see now how we can rewrite a uh, system either in its standard form with X's and Y's or um, in its matrix form, AX equals B.